today is what I'm seeing uh, um, from the male population. And so if you are a person here and you, you think you know someone that is struggling with these issues, then um, pass it on. And a lot of what I talk about, honestly, it's not male or female specific, but sometimes the message around it will shift a little. So anyone you know that sounds like they're dealing with this, please pass it on to give them information. And even if you don't know somebody, just post this in your stories because pelvic floors are just you know, muscles, parts of the body, and a lot of people are struggling with them not operating. So on the male side of things, a lot of times signs, symptoms that maybe you're having some pelvic floor issues can be any of the following and all of the following. So constipation or just difficulty eliminating stool, hemorrhoids that arise oftentimes because of an inability to manage pressure. So we see hemorrhoids a lot going hand in hand with someone that has an over-recruited pelvic floor and also movement mechanics that are not super favorable. If you're lifting a lot of heavy stuff and you don't know how to manage pressure because you don't know how to use your reflexive core stability system, then pressure can go out the bottom and can push on those capillaries that are around the rectum and cause them to swell and fill with fluid. Once you have hemorrhoids, you're pretty much predisposed to keep getting them. And if you don't change how you use your body, sometimes work on some digestion issues and um, work on the pelvic floor, then they're not really going to go away. They're going to be a chronic pain bane of your existence. Okay. Prostatitis, prostate, prostatitis, yeah, I always have a hard time saying that. Um, and, and that's just inflammation of the prostate, oftentimes associated with pain. Lots of the men that I've worked with um, struggle to urinate or have pain in the prostate and simply by training the breath, providing they went to the doctors, they had their prostate checked out, there's no major medical reason for this. Simply training the breath and being better able to relax the pelvic floor helps them, helps the pain to either go away completely or definitely seriously diminishes it, right? Um, so tailbone pain, um, spasms in the pelvis, and then of course on the performance side, right? Like erectile dysfunction, difficulty, like premature climaxing, all that kind of stuff, right? And and so these kinds of issues are symptom, oh, wait a minute, incomplete urination, I don't wanna leave that. Um, incomplete urination and then like frequent need to go to the bathroom and not a lot comes out, but you have to keep going, right? And again, these all of these issues can be associated with other more serious medical conditions, but they aren't always and they aren't exclusively. And even if you do have something going on with your prostate or something going on with your bladder and something going on with, you know, <clears throat> the rectum or whatever is go on the medical healthcare side of things, even then working on the pelvic floor, movement mechanics, breathing, tension management can also help improve your uh, whatever healthcare challenges you're dealing with, okay? So I work on the movement mechanics side of things. I don't diagnose stuff, but I do understand the many different ways that we can tackle pelvic floor issues. And then the other thing that I see too, a lot of times people that struggle with these issues, it goes hand in hand with some gut health digestion issues, right? It can be a chicken egg situation. Sometimes the over recruitment of the pelvic floor causes some backup in the system in the intestines and that causes imbalance in the um your gut bacteria and then your your digestion and your elimination gets messed up other times yeah got a better tripod baby um other times what we can what we see happening is that the digestion and the elimination issues happen first because there's a lot of inflammation in the body because of imbalance in the gut bacteria and the fact of the matter is, is if you don't have um, a digestive system, if you don't have a microbiome that's doing its job, you're going to be in a chronically upregulated state of the nervous system and also the immune system. So your immune system is going to be attacking things all the time. You're going to have inflammation in the tissue. You're not going to be able to adequately extract nutrition from your food so that your tissues can't form as well. There's a lot of different things, and, and I'm not going to talk about it all in this video, but but so here's the thing if you're here and you're a man and you have any of these issues that i described and or stuff on the digestive side and you're starting to notice some pelvic floor issues don't ignore it okay you got to take action and there's a lot of different things you can do you can work privately with a coach and what i see for men as being the the three biggest rocks and this is for women too, um, but definitely for men, because in some ways you're physiologically a little less complicated, which, you know, bully for you, yay, <laughs> is 
training, okay? The way you train in the gym, how often you train, the movements you do, um, and the, the prep you do for the movements, and how you do the movements is hugely impactful. Lots of men are overtraining. Lots of men are training for aesthetics in a way that is negatively impacting function, okay? So that's the training piece. Then there's also the mindset piece around training, sort of obsessing over following a certain program and not having built-in ways to de-stress the body and relax tension, both in the gym and outside of gym, outside of the gym is a really important part, right? Men need to de-stress too. Being a man is like, you know, being a man, being a woman in this day and age is an incredibly intrinsically stressful way to live. And the fact of the matter is we all need routine stress relieving practices because biologically we don't do a lot of these things automatically anymore because um, how we change how we live our life is, in so far as like how sedentary we are, that means like how much we're sitting, how we sit. Um, how much time we're spending on the screens and how we're breathing. A lot of people that spend a lot of time in the, the gym get into a fight or flight chest breathing, breathing pattern that negatively impacts um, their ability to de-stress. So, so we have how you train, how you de-stress and manage tension, and then what you're eating. Look at my fingernails, filthy. I was in the garden all day yesterday. Um, what you're eating, okay? Like what you're eating and how well your digestion is working. And all of these things impact one another. How you train impacts your digestion. How your digestion works impacts your results. Um, and then how you de-stress the body, the built-in stress relieving practices that you need to have everyone needs in their life um, is going to impact that too. And you know, and there's a lot of things people are doing they don't understand is actually upregulating stress. What you watch on the screen, what you allow to come past your eyes into your brain can impact your prefrontal cor cortex and create a body that isn't um, releasing neurotransmitters and biochemicals in a favorable way. You can be in a chronic stress state. I'm talking about video games. I'm talking about um, movies. I'm talking about what you choose to watch on TV. I'm talking about what you choose to watch on the internet. All of this stuff can impact. You have a physiological response to that, right? And a lot of people aren't talking about it, but it is, it's very true. So, so if you're here and you're a man and you're like, well, what do I do, lady? Like, you know, um, <clears throat> There's a bunch of different things you can do. Like I've listed a lot of different issues. And so to tackle those different rocks, I would say start with the breath. Start with the breathing practice because the breath is so impactful. Learning to breathe better is gonna change how you perform in the gym, how you de-stress between sets, how you manage pressure, and can make you stronger, okay? It's, it's a big piece of that. And so I have a free course called Breathe Like a Badass, Better Than Kegels. <clears throat> To be fair, when I made it, I was, I was talking to ladies in a lot of ways, so you might find that some of the stuff I say is female specific, but lots of men are taking this course and they're getting a lot out of it because it's just about the body. It's not just about like, you don't have to have a vagina to take the course for this to make sense. It's not just for women. It's teaching you things that you never knew about your body. It's totally free. Link in my bio, go sign up and please share this message with a friend, okay? Because I want to reach as many people as possible that are struggling with pelvic floor issues because I really believe that it's a solvable problem. And right now, more than ever, we need people to be powerful, confident, capable, and content in their bodies so they can do important things in the world, right? And so we don't need to be held back by a lack of confidence, a lot of pain, because we have important jobs to do, right? The world is, is needing good people to stand up and do good work. And pelvic health is keeping people um, afraid, um, physically incapacitated, fearful, nervous, and causing them to lose trust in their body. And so I want to use my expertise to help you so that you can do better things, right? And, you know, so if you can get back into the gym and not be in pain, right? That's important too. Okay, so if you have any questions, please direct message me again. Share this with a friend.